Amen, church. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you please stand with me as we sing our opening hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing to let the heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies, let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark has
go tell it on the mountain uh, over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain uh, that Jesus Christ is born down in a lowly manger the humble Christ was born and brought us our salvation the blessed Christmas morn that blessed Christmas morn go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born I said to go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born that Jesus Christ is born that Jesus Christ is born bow your heads with me as we pray father as we open your holy word I ask that you would cleanse me of all unrighteousness fill my life with your Holy Spirit's presence and power speak to me through me and for me and I promise you Lord I'll always give you the honor the glory and the praise in Jesus name I pray amen by the grace of God this morning I want to preach and share a sermon that has been 40 years in the making if you have your Bibles with you you can turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 9 beginning with verse 13 the word of God says then Ananias answered Lord I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem and here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. My message today, a revelation of purpose. A revelation of purpose. When we look at the life of the Apostle Paul, it is almost impossible to calculate the impact and contributions of his ministry. Paul was a scholar, a teacher, a prodigious theological phenomenon. He was used by God to establish the doctrines and foundations of the Christian church. But like many of us here today, early in his youth, Paul began a search for an understanding of his true purpose in life. What is purpose? It is a question none of us can shirk or avoid. Why am I here? 
What am I living for? And as you get older, it's what is God keeping me alive for? It is really the most profound question of life. A question we all are compelled to answer and whether or not we like it, we will answer by the thoughts we think and the way we live. Purpose. It is the quiet whisper of the human heart. A desperate cry for meaning and significance. Purpose. It is that nagging reminder that God never meant for our lives to be a ragtag assortment of meaningless days. Days strung together by a thread of coincidence and random circumstance. Purpose. It is the golden cord that holds our weary lives together. Someone once said the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but life without purpose. When you know your purpose, it is beautiful. But when you don't know your purpose, you are nothing more than a tragic actor in a masquerade. Purpose. It is what gives our lives relevance. No amount, no amount of money in the bank or career accomplishments can make up for the lack of purpose. It is the call within us to live up to the potential for which we were created. You see, your purpose determines your priorities. Your purpose guides your decisions. Your purpose dictates your companions. Even shapes your choices. When you are not living your purpose, angels weep. Heaven is sad. Well, in his quest for his sense of purpose, the Apostle Paul first searched his family lineage on Ancestry.com and what he found there filled his heart with pride. Paul found out that he was a blue blood Israelite. He had come from one of the most well regarded families in Advent in Judaism. But Paul learned early, you can't find your true purpose wearing a family crest or even carrying the family name. Paul didn't find the fruit of purpose on the branches of his family tree. Many students are here at this university and like Paul, you are determined to find your purpose your path to make your own way in the world, determined to find the purpose for which you were created. Paul searched for his purpose in his family lineage, but he did not find it there. Paul then searched for a sense of his true purpose in his race and cultural identity. Paul was a member of the tribe of Benjamin. He said, he said, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Paul soon learned you can't find your true purpose in your race. Trust me, Wakanda forever is entertainment. It cannot give a race of people their sense of purpose. Race may inspire pride, but it cannot give purpose. I remember the pride and inspiration I felt sitting in Moran Hall 
On a Sunday afternoon, I think it was about 1973, the students of Oakwood were invited to attend a hurry-up lyceum. <laughs> That's an unscheduled presentation from someone we had never heard of. Little did we know that we were going to be blessed with a preview of history. The premiere of a remarkable historic event. We sat there and soon a man walked out onto the stage at Moran Hall that day and for three hours, you know, we can't sit still for 20 minutes. We got to get on our devices. But for three hours, we sat spellbound listening to Alex Haley tell us how he had found Kunta Kinte's village and the ancestors from his roots. Alex Haley inspired us to reconnect with our roots. He gave us a sense of belonging and pride. And you remember back in 73, everybody was wearing Kinte cloth and dashikis and afros, afros, even me. I know it doesn't seem possible, but I used to have, remember what we call a bush? That's what we call afros, but somebody remember a bush growing on my head. Because of Alex Haley, we all felt like we had found our roots. He, his discovery gave us a deepened connection with Africa. But it didn't give us, as a people, a sense of purpose. You see, just because you're black and proud doesn't mean you know your purpose. I'm so thankful that as I grew older, God gave me a special friendship with Alex Haley. He became one of my dear friends. I actually sang at his funeral. I was honored to do that. Brothers and sisters, too many people today of all colors, black, brown, white, yellow, are still looking to their race for their purpose. I'm here to tell you, you will never find your purpose in your skin color or your facial features. You will never find your purpose in the shape of your nose or the texture of your hair. As a matter of fact, Paul calls that glorying after the flesh. Nothing in your flesh can ever give you a sense of high purpose. Hear me today. Hear me. Christians who glory in their skin color and find their purpose first and foremost in their race are nothing but spiritual races. Christians who find their purpose in their skin color are spiritual races. You may find pride in your race, but you will never find your purpose in your race. Oh, when will we learn that to God different doesn't mean deficient? When will we learn that God is actually offended when we rank his children superior or inferior by race or color? God is offended just like you would be offended if someone talked down about one of your children and raised up another in their presence. My God, you know what I'm telling you is true. God never gave any race a God-given right to rule and dominate land or cultural natural resources of any other race. In God's eyes, all men are created in his image and God is no respecter of persons. Paul searched for his purpose in his race but he didn't find it there. And then Paul did what many who are searching for their purpose often do. Paul entered the seminary. You know, some think it is a supreme way to find your purpose. Go to the seminary. 
Paul was schooled by Gamaliel in the rigorous forms of a classical Greek theological education. But because of his scholarship and sophistication, Paul, because of his erudite and agile mind, he matriculated with honors. But to his dismay, he didn't find his purpose in his educational accomplishments. A degree may sharpen your professional prowess, but a degree cannot give you your purpose. And then Paul did what many feel is bound to give you a true sense of purpose. Paul entered the ministry. You know, many turn to ministry to find their sense of purpose. But what they don't see is that ministry is a calling. And you can be in the ministry and still miss your purpose. There are many ministers in the ministry today who do not know their purpose. You don't find your purpose by putting a clerical title in front of your name, elder, preacher, bishop. A, re a religious title is not a revelation of your purpose. And Paul excelled in the ministry. His rise to clerical prominence was nothing short of meteoric. His ecclesiastical notoriety made him a leading member of the Sanhedrin. Even legends and leaders were coming to Paul for counsel and advice. But despite his successes, Paul knew that he had not yet found his purpose. As a matter of fact, in his quest for greater respect amongst his brethren, Paul became cruel and vindictive and he hunted down all enemies of the Jewish faith, including, including Christians. You know, it's amazing how low so-called righteous men will stoop to stop those they call heretics. You didn't hear me today. It is amazing how, how inhumane and how ungodly men can become when they see you as a threat to their vision of a moral order. I said at chapel last Thursday that human beings have an infinite capacity for self-rationalization. It's true. We can have an excuse for anything. Even the Bible says they will kill you thinking they are serving God. Paul thought he had found his purpose hunting down heretics and, and we got, help me Jesus, we have people with the same kind of thinking in our church. You know people who feel their purpose is to clean up the church by destroying your witness, squashing your ministry. You know those kind of people, if what you're preaching about doesn't have the theological emphasis they approve of, they try to actually hurt you. I've learned in my life, however, if God is for you, no man can limit the influence of your ministry. If God is for you, no man can restrict the impact God has ordained for your life. Think about this. If empires rise and fall according to his will, don't you know your God can take care of your haters on social media? He's got you. Like Joseph, he will take you from being an outlier to power and make you a beneficiary of power. That's what my Bible tells me. He says he puts up one king and takes down another. I know he can take care of your detractors. He said, delight yourself in the Lord and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. What a God when he's for you. Who can stand against you? To get to you, they got to come through here. And he who brought you will keep you. 
carry you in the hollow of his hand. That's why, that's why what happens in Washington, D.C. doesn't worry me. And it shouldn't worry you. Oh yeah, my Bible says whatsoever a man soweth, he will reap. I had an old black man tell me one day, he said, brother, let me give you some advice. People who say they can help you. He said, beware of people who can afford their fantasies. Uh, you get that when you get home today. And so one day, in his role as bounty hunter for the Pharisees, Paul was hot on the trail of a band of new Christian believers. But while he was trailing and tracking them, he was unaware he was being shadowed and followed himself. The hunter was being hunted. The killer was being stalked. The predator was being sought by none other than the supreme monarch of the universe. And out there on the road to Damascus, all around Paul's head shone a blinding light, brighter than the noonday sun. Out of the light spoke a heavenly voice, a voice ringing with a thunderous melody. Saul, why are you persecuting me? Paul answered, who art thou, Lord? And then the Lord answered, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. And then Paul said in Acts chapter 9, verse 6, oh, look at this, Acts 9, verse 6, Paul said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Show me. My purpose. And out there on that road to Damascus, Paul surrendered to Jesus. And God began to take Paul on a journey towards the understanding of his purpose. I want you to know, sometimes it takes a minute. It doesn't always happen overnight. It took me at least 40 years to understand what I am preaching to you today. Look at it, Acts chapter 9 verse 20. The Bible says straight away, Paul began to preach Christ in the synagogue. It seemed as though Paul had finally found the preeminent purpose of his life. Paul was now a seven-day Adventist preacher. But hear me today, Paul was clear on his role, but he didn't yet understand his purpose. You can be an Adventist preacher and understand your role and not know your purpose. Even though he was preaching powerful Adventist sermons, he didn't understand God's purpose for his life. So guess what God did? God pulled Paul out of the pulpit. Oh yes. Said no you can't preach not right now. And Ellen White says Paul, God sequestered Paul in Arabia and Jesus communed with Paul and it was there in Arabia that Paul learned from Jesus the preeminent purpose of his life. Listen, listen, listen. You know, Paul had not found his purpose in his race. He had not found it in his ethnic heritage. He had not found it in his scholarship, his education, his degrees. He had not found it in his rise to clerical prominence. He had not found it in his church title and position. You know, I thought I made it when I was voted into the general conference. I sure, I was sure I had found my purpose. And the more I looked, the more I realized you can't find your purpose in a church position. Paul did not find his purpose in fame, success, notoriety. He did not find it in his role as protector of the faith. He had not even found his purpose in the pulpit. Paul only found his true purpose when Jesus taught him in Arabia 
and gave him an epiphany. And that's why I call this message the revelation of purpose. Uh, this revelation of purpose, I believe what Jesus showed Paul is the preeminent truth of the Christian church. And I could tell you what Paul said, but I'd rather you hear it in his own words. So listen, go to the Bible if you have. Galatians chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Galatians 1, 15 and 16. Paul says, hear Paul now, when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, allowed me to live and called me by his grace and here it is don't miss it here is Paul's declaration of the preeminent purpose of life as taught to him by Jesus Paul says God called me by his grace to reveal his son in me to reveal his son the character of Christ in me after all his searching Paul declares he has finally found what he had been searching for all his life he had found the preeminent purpose of life and it is to reveal the character of the Son of God in our lives it is the preeminent purpose of life to resemble to reflect and to reveal the character of Christ. This ought to be your undying focus. It is the highest purpose for which you live. The servant of the Lord says it this way. Listen to how Ellen White says it. She says, the Christian's mission in the world is to reveal the character of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to get happy all by myself in this church. The Christian's mission, your mission, your purpose in this world is to reveal the character of Christ. And what is character? Character is the sum and total collection of your thoughts, your words, your attitudes, your actions, your choices. Do your thoughts reveal Christ? Do your words reveal Christ? Do your attitudes reveal Christ? Do your actions and choices reveal Christ? Character is who you are when no one is looking. Do you still reveal Christ? when nobody is watching you character is your listen carefully your first reaction to an offense not your delayed action but your first action to an insult or defense you're not going to be in heaven looking at angels sideways talking about looking at an angel and say what you just say to me You've heard it said, you've heard it said character counts. But you hear this from me today. Character is everything. Even on your job, in business, have you noticed we hire for skills but fire for character. And if you think about it, there is always a direct line from crisis to a deficit of character. In your own life, in a, an institution like this, in the world, in the White House, there always is a direct line from crisis, setback, and loss to a deficit of character. Character is seen in what you are willing to get away with if you can. You know, I've been a preacher for 40 years, and if you ask me, if you had asked me what is my purpose 10 years ago or even five years ago, I would have probably given you an incomplete answer. 
You see, my response would have been centered around my understanding of my role in the world. I'd have told you, my purpose is to be a good husband. My, my purpose is to be a good pastor, a good father. I would have told you, my life's purpose is to live the dream God was dreaming for me. Oh, my life's purpose is to live in the flow of the moments of destiny God has prepared for me. But while on this journey that God took me, just like he took Paul, just like he's taking you, he took me on a journey for 40 years. I've been searching for my own sense of purpose and God showed me I was living for what I call moments of destiny. You know, I love, I love being in the right place at the right time and watching God do his stuff. That's the only way I was able to sing and meet with and have breakfast with the last six presidents, former presidents of the United States. I love living for those moments of destiny. But God pulled me aside in my journey. God said, son, moments of destiny are moments for which you were created, but they're not the reason for which you were created. God said the purpose, the reason for which you were created is to grow more every day to resemble, reflect, and reveal the character of my son. Did you know, did you know, this, this, this will blow you away. Did you know that Ellen White says, in all the instructions of Jesus, that means in everything Jesus taught, he presented to us the character of his father. Did you just hear what I just said? In everything Jesus taught, he presented to us the character of God. And so I know my purpose in the world is higher than my role in the world. Your purpose in the world is more important than your role in the world. Mr. Doctor, lawyer, sister lawyer, teacher, cook, cleaner, that's your role in the world. It's not your purpose. You see, because at some point you will stop being Mr. Doctor. You won't be able to carry on being sister lawyer, teacher, cook, or cleaner, but you will never lose your purpose. If you understand this message today, the most important thing you can do with your life is through the power that comes from surrender to Jesus, live every day to resemble, reflect, and reveal the character of Christ. And I will tell you, you will not find your highest purpose in the affirmation and approbation of your peers. <laughs> Don't look for your <laughs> affirmation of purpose from any committee. Don't look for your affirmation of purpose from any board. As a matter of fact, you will not even find your highest purpose in the applause of men. I thought about this and I give God the glory. I have received more applause than any one man deserves in a lifetime. And I can tell you, you will not find your purpose in the capricious, the capricious applause of men. Uh, let me use the word I took out. The fickle applause of men. You will not find your purpose in medals and awards. You will not find your highest purpose in diplomas and degrees. You will not find your purpose in money and wealth. You will not find your purpose in owning property. I don't care how much, how many houses you own. You won't find your purpose there. You won't, let, single ladies, single ladies, you will not find your highest purpose in a man. Single ladies, single ladies, you will not find your highest purpose in a puppy. You will not find your highest purpose in a marriage. You will not find your highest purpose in your children. One day they'll be gone too. 
You will not find your highest purpose in a brilliant career. You will not find your purpose in any other thing than living every day to resemble, reflect, and reveal the character of God in your life. I remember I, I, I flew all the way to Australia one day to, to do their camp meeting. And as I arrived, I stood up. I said, I've come a long way to make a simple case for the preeminence of Christ likeness. Nothing is more important in our pantheon of truth. Now, 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 I'm going to step on some toes. Can I do that for the next few moments I have left? To be sure. The church has many goals and purposes, but the character of Christ revealed in the lives of its members, I believe, ought to be the preeminent focus and purpose of the church. Everything we are and everything we do as a church should be subordinated. To Christ likeness Lord Jesus I don't care what we build I don't care anything we whatever we do in every meeting we need to ask ourselves are we revealing the character of Christ the decisions we have made here today before you close before you close ask the decisions we made in this meeting today do they reveal Christ do they reflect Christ everything ought to be subordinated to this purpose brothers and sisters hear me today I told you I'm gonna get it's gonna to be tough right now for a moment there is a difference between present truth and preeminent truth we as a church are blessed to have deep insights and a great understanding of present truth. Amen? We are blessed to understand the significance of the 70 week prophecy and the 490 years. And the, uh, Are you with me today? Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. The 2300 day prophecy and the cleansing of the sanctuary. Uh, but sadly, many understand present truth more than they understand this preeminent truth. Too many of our believers whose primary focus is present truth become nothing but eschatological last day events provocateurs. They think the only way to prepare other people for the coming of Jesus is by putting up shocking billboards and slamming the failures of other churches or shaming people on YouTube and social media. But listen to what Ellen White says about the Bible. She, she says the central theme of the Bible about which every other book in the Bible revolves is the restoration in the human soul of the image and character of God. This is the preeminent truth. She also says, the very essence of the gospel is the restoration of the image and character of God in man. Present truth without preeminent truth is an incomplete gospel. And to preach and teach the fullness of truth, we must hold up this preeminent truth. The restoration of Christ's likeness in my character and in your character. She says, this is the great important work we should be doing. What? Receiving the divine likeness. Preparing the character for the future life. For what does it matter if you know the details of prophecy and in your character you're not prepared for the fulfillment of the prophecy? Make that make sense to me. She also says, unless the prophecies, unless the prophecies and truths you believe transform your character, 
those truths you believe are of no value to you. Unless the Sabbath changes you so that you look more like Jesus, that truth is of no value to you. She said, Jesus came to earth to reveal to us the character of the Father and to transform our character that we might live with him forever. Uh, you know, our problem is too many who want to be with him don't want to be like him. And I don't mean now and then. I mean all day. Every day. So often through the day, here's what we do. We grant ourselves what I call PMEs, personal moral exemptions. I don't feel good right now, so I'm going to talk the way I want to talk. That's a PME. But let me tell you, forgiveness of sin is no substitute for the forsaking of sin. Striving to be like Jesus. Some people come up, hey brother, slow down. This all this striving to be like Jesus. That's a religion of works. And you know what? You're right. But what you don't see is there's nothing good in me. And all the good I do, I do it in his power. And because there's nothing good in me and good works you see me do Jesus gets the credit I'm not looking for the credit of my good works cause there's no oh, you're not listening to me cause there's no good in me any good work you see coming from me give him the praise as my friend Andre Crouch used to sing, if I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. So when you see me do any good thing, rejoice and give him the praise. Whenever I through his power resemble, reflect his character, don't give me any credit. It's his power that makes it possible for me to have the right temper and the right attitude and for me to smile God wants to transform us brothers and sisters and like many of you like the Apostle Paul I too searched for my sense of purpose in my race I I, I, I used to search for it you know am I a Trinidadian I don't play cricket no more you know uh, am I a Canadian? I can't ski. I search for my sense of purpose in my unique talents, in my educational accomplishments, in my ministerial career. Yes, I used to search for my sense of purpose in church employment. You know, I thought, man, you are really serving the Lord when you're working for the church. But I was working for the church and didn't understand my purpose. Like many in ministry, I thought the higher the position, the greater sense of purpose you would feel. But God showed me uh, there's no higher purpose than living to resemble, reflect, and reveal his character. Brothers and sisters. I wish I could finish this message today, but I can't. It has taken me 40 years to understand what I've tried to preach in 40 minutes. That there is nothing more important you can do with your life every day than live to become more like the character of God. And it is the preeminent truth. As I close, a young man was in a terrible motor car accident and he lost his left arm. 
The family wanted to keep him inspired and encouraged. So they signed him up for judo class. The head of the class, the master, said, I'll take him. I'll take him. And then for the next months, the teacher would only teach this young man one judo move. Every day, it was one move. They entered him into the tournament. Said, nah, no, nobody's going to win with one arm. But he won his first contest. Everyone was shocked. He kept moving up. He finally reached the finals, the championship. And all he knew was one move. When the championship match came, everyone was nervous, but he won the championship. On the way home, he asked his judo teacher, how is it that you only taught me one move and I was able to win the championship? Well, said the teacher, you've almost mastered one of the most difficult moves in all of judo. He said, but second and more importantly, the only known defense for that move is for your opponent to grab your left wrist. And you don't have a left wrist. I want you to know the devil has many moves. He can mount against us. But we only need this one move. Be like Jesus. You may be wounded, but you got a winning move. You can reveal, you can reflect, you can resemble every day the character of Christ. You may be offended, you may be upset, you may be hurt, but you've got a winning move. Just be like Jesus. You may be broken, you may be injured, you may be distressed, disappointed, but you've got a winning move. All I got to do is be like Jesus. This my song in the throng, be like Jesus all day long I will be like Jesus this one move is gonna get you so that you can walk with angels all you gotta do is surrender Will you bow your heads with me? This is the preeminent focus of my life. I may not always get it right, but I can tell you for sure this is the preeminent purpose of my life is there anyone here today who will say Lord me too Lord help me every day every hour to surrender to this call you may be in 
you may have been in church all your life but missed this purpose to reveal the character of Jesus when the devil comes at you this is the only move you need and it is a winning move my brother my sister if you want to join me today and say Lord I surrender and I'm making a decision for the rest of my life every day every hour I am going to surrender to this call to resemble reflect and reveal the character of Jesus my brother my sister if you want to say this to the Lord and join me in this commitment I want you to raise your hand and say pastor I heard this word it is a life-changing word for me from this day forward I want to live my life every hour of every day to resemble reflect and reveal the character of Christ this is my preeminent truth Hallelujah! those of you who raised your hands if you're sincere if you are honest and sincere I want to invite you to stand on your feet come to this altar for a word of prayer I want to pray with you I want to pray for you don't worry slip out and come right now if you're sincere if you really mean it it doesn't matter who's watching or where they're watching from come for prayer today I am making a decision that from this day forward I am going by the grace of God to respond to this call every day every hour to live so that I resemble reflect and reveal the character of Christ oh let's sing it together all to Jesus wherever you are all to Jesus I surrender all to him present truth but don't you neglect this preeminent truth don't you neglect this preeminent truth when Jesus comes he's not looking for what you know but who you are he's not coming to give you a quiz on how much you remember he wants to see 
You know, I, 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 before I leave, I got to tell you this. Uh, I used to wonder why Jesus was so hard on the Pharisees, you know. Jesus said to the Pharisees, he called them vipers and graves full of dead men's bones. And he was hard on them. He was hard on them. I said, Lord, why were you so hard on the Pharisees? Jesus said, you go to the ends of the earth to make new disciples, proselytes, members. He said, but when you're through with them, they are twice the child of hell that you are. Why was, I asked the Lord, why were you so hard? And then Jesus told me, what he was really saying is, you go to the ends of the earth to make new disciples, but when you're through with them, they look more like you then they look like me. I don't want us to be a church that bring in people and when we're through with them, they look more like us than they look like him. My brother, my sister, I don't know who you are, you may want to make a decision to be baptized. This is a new moment for you. This is a new day. Just raise your hand and say, I want to be baptized. I want to go down into the watery grave of baptism. I've heard this message and I am surrendering to this preeminent truth that I need to live the rest of my life striving to resemble. Come on church, to resemble, to reflect, and to work. Reveal, as Paul said, God called me by his grace to reveal his son in me. That's my purpose. Nobody can take your purpose from you. God, you've heard and seen the prayers of your children coming forward, making a decision to live forever to live so that they resemble Christ in all they do I ask oh God that you will honor that commitment I ask God that you would send your Holy Spirit teach them how to surrender moment by moment every day no personal moral exemptions allowed not for me I want to live so that I look like Jesus when I'm stressed I want to look, I want to live so I look like Jesus when I'm hurt. I want to live so I look like Jesus when I'm disappointed, when I'm angry. I want to be like Jesus. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. Jesus, help me to preach this word so that your church understands that we must surrender to this preeminent truth of Christ likeness in your holy name I pray amen and amen and amen God bless you quietly go back to your seat Him, praise Him, praise Him.
Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, for our sins He suffered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation, hail Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound His praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Our blessed Redeemer, heavenly waters, loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming. Yeah.